capturing history has meant familiar steps for Joe Olson. Testing, one, two, three. Each time preparing to dip a hydrophone underwater to reveal the soundtrack beneath, giving him a front row seat to historic marine milestones. And the hydrophone doesn't have to go very deep at all before you can hear the sound. Olson has spent decades designing, building, and deploying tools to capture underwater calls and noise. If there were orcas and they were calling and they were a mile away, we would hear them as well. At this urban marina in Seattle's Ballard neighborhood, he captured the sounds of small creatures living near docks, a sample he played back for us to show how it all works. All these are the bivalve sounds. He uses these spectrograms to visually demonstrate recordings and help us better understand what we're hearing. Now she's whistling, you know that squeaky, yeah. the real, we can zoom in on that. This sound from a cold morning in 2002 was key to the journey of another orca with a story of rescue and reunion, then toddler Springer. She was found stranded near Vashon Island, leading Puget Sound orca advocates on a quest to find her family and return her home. Perfect example of how people working together for the best interest of whatever it is works, right? And, and I mean, I would like to take the, the whole Springer protocol and have that work with Toki. Olson taped some of the first recordings of her, tracks used to trace her back to her northern resident pod in Canada. A lot of her just making her orca baby talk. A lot of it was just these weird little <laughs> sounds that didn't really, <laughs> didn't really mean anything, right? But every once in a while she would make something that was more of a squeal that was a squeal like her pod. So that's what it was, just several hours out in the ice cold water recording her. And, and that's all it took right, to, to be able to narrow down who she was. Listening to Toki could yield traces of her pod's dialect, and playing sounds for her could help condition her for her new environment. Oh, I think she'll definitely get relief. She'll definitely get relief by, by being in the natural waters here. Even with the, the, the vessel traffic that we have, I think it's not going to be nearly as bad as what she's been exposed to for the last 50 years. Many believe Tokate was part of L-Pod, likely the daughter of L-25 Ocean Sun. Olson also captured their calls back in 1997 when 19 orcas waded into Dai's Inlet. That noise I just heard. And then clicks. Yeah, see now you're, now you're recognizing stuff, right? Work aimed at better understanding how orcas communicate in hopes of helping to restore their well-being. It's way past time for us to start making things right again. And my hope is that by, by this really simple act, it may be complex in the logistics, but it's really a simple act of just... Eric Zuko. Bringing somebody home. King 5 News.